Welcome to Dad Tech. My name is Jet, and if you're new here, we talk tech toys and gear for geek centric dads. Today, I'm reviewing the smart soundbar from Roku. But before we get started, do me a favor. If you like this type of content, please hit that like button down below and subscribe as it really helps the channel grow. If you're looking to delve into the world of cord cutting and want a one stop solution that incorporates 4K audio, that is well beyond what the internal speakers of your TV can muster. Roku would like a word with you. Most homes now have more than one television set where people consume content. So Roku soundbar, now priced at $149.99, is well positioned to be the complementary component for every TV in your home, especially if that TV is old enough not to be considered a smart television capable of internal streaming. From a design standpoint, the Roku soundbar comes in at 32 inches wide, 2.8 inches tall and 3.2 inches deep. It sports a matte black finish with rounded edges and a cloth grille that drapes over the front fascia, reminiscent of the Sonos Beam. The only badging found on the soundbar is the Roku logo on top of the device. There's only one LED to speak of, and that indicates that the unit is on and receiving a signal. The rear of the unit houses all the connections for the soundbar, namely the power adapter connection, one HDMI ARC port, an optical in for older televisions, and a USB connection. There are also mounting points which will allow you to mount the soundbar against your wall. As this is also a streaming device, you also receive the voice-enabled Roku remote, similar to the standalone Roku devices on the market today. All the key buttons are on here, home, power, back, and volume rocker controls. You also have streaming service specific buttons for ESPN, Hulu, Netflix, and Sling? I'm not even sure who uses Sling anymore, but anyway. One strange omission from the typical Roku device remote is the headphone jack. I wonder what the logic behind leaving this out was as it was such a convenient functionality, especially if you're trying to watch TV with a sleeping spouse in the same room. Just remember that there are no buttons to speak of on the unit itself, so please be aware if you are prone to losing your remote as you will have to use the app in order to control it, which may be a hassle for some, especially if you're giving the soundbar as a present to parents or grandparents who may not be keen on navigating the interface through the app. Having had all the variations of the iterations of Roku devices, I didn't find that the soundbar had any performance issues whatsoever navigating the UI. The controls felt zippy and there was no discernible latency that I noticed. Load times for streaming services were nearly identical in side-by-side -side tests with standalone Roku devices. Nearly the entire suite of music and movie streaming platforms are at your disposal in the Roku interface with the exception of Twitch. The soundbar is also Bluetooth, Spotify Connect, AirPlay 2, and HomeKit compatible as well, if you choose to connect it through those methods as well. Note, however, that although the soundbar supports 4K HDR, it does not support Dolby Vision, even if a streaming service provides it. Moving on to the other half of the soundbar's functionality, which is audio. The soundbar is powered by four two and a half inch drivers behind the grill, and out of the box, it supports 2.0 channel sound. Although for another $150, you can pair it with a Roku subwoofer to get a 2.1 channel configuration. Even without the subwoofer, the bass response is, I would say decent, if not powerful, and I was impressed by the level of clarity of the dialogue coming out of the soundbar and that's before I applied the available speech enhancement mode. There is a clear delineation in speech even when there's a lot of crosstalk occurring on the screen during movies and TV shows. Also, I never felt that the underlying soundtracks overpowered the conversations in the movies and TV shows I tested, which sometimes happens on soundbars that are acoustically unbalanced. For a purely 2.0 sound field, I felt the soundstage was wide enough that maybe you don't necessarily need to spend extra money on the available rear surround speakers. I would rather invest those funds to bolster the base by buying the subwoofer instead. Overall, I would say that for movies in particular, the soundbar is crisp and engaging, but be aware that there will be moments that will require much more low frequency response that will feel a little bit lacking. If you're adamant, however, in getting as much bass response as possible, I would say make the investment first in a subwoofer upgrade, first and foremost, before getting the surround sound speakers. As for music, you can really hear the presence of the clarity in vocal heavy tracks, but once again, it does suffer when you pit it against more bass heavy tracks. There is some slight low latency distortion that is introduced when you compensate for the bass by turning the volume up. I would define the musicality of the soundbar as balanced and perhaps leaning slightly more towards the mids and the highs. There is a nice presence to the multi-instrument tracks with a certain prominence for vocals and strings specifically. Again, if you feel that the bass presence is a must have for your audio, I believe the subwoofers would pair nicely and round out the sound of the unit. Overall, for most musical applications, the soundbar is a decent performer and can fill a room with good, vibrant sound, even if it's not necessarily 
full bodied without the subwoofer. Like I mentioned in the beginning of the review, most homes nowadays have multiple televisions and more often than not, they're a few years old. The Roku soundbar can enliven those TV sets that are getting long in the tooth and turn them into stalwart streaming machines capable of high quality home theater audio for less than $200. Although it might not be as sexy as some of the Dolby Atmos or DTS-X capable soundbar devices on the market today, it is still a great value that can bring your older televisions into the streaming age while simultaneously upgrading well beyond the internal TV audio without the need for multiple devices. Now, check out my other reviews here and subscribe to the channel if you enjoyed this content, and I will see you next time. Peace.